So in uh, today's presentation, um, we are actually going to see the installation of Nexus 1000V. Um, we'll be doing the complete installation me, uh, means beginning with the uh, vCenter, uh, the ESXi host, uh, the Nexus 1000V VSM module, virtual switch module, and the uh, virtual Ethernet module, that is the WAM module. So we'll see how to install the VSM and then how to add the WAM module um, to the VSM module to make it a full-blown um, Nexus 1000V um, switch, right? So um, I'll break this um, installation into um, four parts. One is starting with the um, vCenter installation. Then we'll do the um, ESXi host installation, right? Um, uh, within this ESXi host installation, we'll be seeing um, what needs to be configured from the um, on the networking perspective, uh, um, and uh, what all modifications need to be done in order to proceed with the uh, Nexus 1000V VSM installation. Then we'll be continuing with the VSM installation, and then finally, WIM installation, and we'll be seeing how do we install the WIM modules on the ESXi host, and um, how we can uh, integrate that with the Nexus 1000 V switch. Okay, uh, there's no formal presentation for this. Um, it's just a complete live demo. So uh, if you have any questions or doubts, just um, stop me and uh, feel free to ask any questions. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll be doing the uh, the whole installation on uh, works VMware Workstation 10. It'll make it easier for you so that you can try it at your home or your own servers or uh, machines. Um, um, you don't need to have a, a UCS server or um, any other big server to um, you know uh, try this installation at your own um, um, own system, right? So uh, first we'll begin with uh, the vCenter uh, installation. All right, so we have um, uh, let me okay, I think I have um OVA file for the v center uh let me open that so we get a k okay, uh virtualization software oh v center. Okay, this is the directory, uh, vSphere operation management, vCenter, and uh, we'll be using vCenter server in virtual appliance. Now, there are different ways of installation of uh, vCenter server. You can um, install an Active Directory server um, domain controller and then add a host to it and then do an installation on that host. You can do that. You can also directly do the installation from um, the vCenter server in virtual appliance. Uh, it's an easier way to install the vCenter and it's standalone so it uses less resources. So I think there's a better option to go for. So we'll be selecting the path. Um, again, K drive, uh, virtualization, vCenter. Okay. And we just import the OVA file. And we name it uh, vCenter. Right. It's, uh, it's going to take a couple of minutes to uh, complete the import. Uh, we can modify certain uh, uh, installation options, like uh, if you want to add um, um, NIC cards or um, any such um, other hardware uh, or storage, to, um, increase your storage on the vCenter, you can do that as well. Um, but we'll go with the default installation on vCenter. So I'll, I'll try to keep pausing uh, the recording um, so that we don't record all the stuff of this progress uh, while we are waiting for this to get imported, right? 
Okay, so uh, the uh, the OV file has been extracted. Uh, the installation is with uh, a default of 8 gig of RAM. Uh, I think that's sufficient. Uh, we can increase uh, the number of cores in the processor to two. That makes it a two core, four core processor. Uh, you can add some uh, virtualization technology to it if your server supports. Um, the hard disk, um, uh, there are by default two uh, SCSI hard drives installed. By default, one is 25 gig and one is 100 gig. 100 gig is the one that is available for you for um, all the um, um, internal storage within the vCenter. Um, so you can use that. If you want to add certain more, you can do that as well. So. Regarding uh, the vCenter, um, we will be using our, um, the NATed uh, subnet that is over VMNet 8. So um, just selecting that option. Right. And um, here we go. So let's boot the vCenter server. The installation takes more time if we try to install it on the server because you have to go through the whole process of the installation. With the OVA file, it's pre-compiled, pre-deployed file, so you just download it, extract it, and you know, uh, you're know you good to go. It's getting its IP from the um, DHCP server because we are adding it, so it got the IP of 192.168.244.161. Uh, we can edit this IP and set it to a static IP from the uh, GUI window. Um, uh, we'll be looking into that um, just after this gets completed. You also have an option um, for connecting it to the LDAP server or um, Active Directory. Um, you can do that. Um, if you want to keep it a standalone, um, that's fine as well. Uh, for this uh, demonstration, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep it to the default installation. Uh, I mean, the default without integrating it with um, any other um, extra domain control or server. Right. So um, once the um, the vCenter server has booted up, you'll see a screen on the VMware where you will be um, guided to a four-step process to uh, complete the installation or to um, uh, do the further uh, configuration on it. Right. So since you got the IP of 192.168.244.161. You can actually open your browser and go to this uh, uh, HTTPS address, colon five four eight zero. right? It's running on this port, so let's go over there. All right, um, we can proceed. Now, by default, the username is root and the password is VMware, right? As soon as you log in, um, it will ask you for um, accepting the agreement. Click on the accept license agreement and click on next. It will run through the whole script automatically, create its own database, um, SSL settings, um, Active Directory settings are um, not set because uh, we are not uh, doing it. Um, <clears throat> you need to select the option of configure with the default settings. You can upgrade as well, or you, if you have any pre-configuration file with you, you can upload that as well, or you want to go with the custom configuration, you can do that as well. So to, it's totally up to you which option you want to go with. Um, uh, let's go with the default settings. 
right? And now it will start to do uh, the installation. So it will um, maintain its own local database, uh, its SSO settings. Um, all, all the stuff is automated, so you don't really need to do anything. And you just need to click on Start after you have selected all the options. It's going to take a while um, uh, to complete uh, the whole configuration process. Uh, in the meanwhile, we can try to open our vSphere client uh, that we'll be, uh, we will be using to connect to the vCenter server once it's um, done with the configuration. Right. So it already has this IP um, root. VMware. All right, so um, the configuration has been completed and the vCenter server has been started. Uh, we can now close this uh, pop up dialog. And now if you see um, the uh, browser, uh, you'll be able to see that the status of the service running. Uh, you can stop services from here if you want. Um, you can also look at the various um, um, settings of the vCenter server, like the database. Uh, it's embedded database. You can also migrate to Oracle or, or different server. Um, for the SSO right now, it's... Um, it's set to the default settings, uh, but you can um, definitely set it to a different value or um, uh, use the LDAP server. For uh, the time, you can use your NDP servers if you have within your network. Um, by default, uh, you're again using no synchronization. It's good to have uh, synchronization enabled for the NDP, but um, it's fine. We can go, we'll still go around with uh, no synchronization. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, we have uh, other settings as well. So as I was talking about, you can integrate it with the Active Directory um, or other services, right? Um, you have your network settings uh, if you want. Um, I mean, by default, it's configured with uh, the DHCP address. Um, you can change it to static and set the values accordingly uh, as per your uh, network. Um, and um, I believe, um, yeah, those are the most important settings that you need to look into, right? Uh, so once the configuration is complete, we can now connect to the um, vCenter server using the vSphere client. Um, let's um, use the same login details. Um, root VMware, click on ignore, and uh, it will then connect to the vCenter server. Okay, so now it has connected to the vCenter server. You can rename this to, um, rename it to CGT. Uh, we can, uh, so once you have uh, logged in to the vCenter server, uh, the first and foremost task is to create the data center for your vCenter server, right? So you create a new data center, we name it Coder Genie, right? Um, that is done. So now uh, you can see the default uh, different settings um, um, within your uh, uh, data center, uh, your resource pools, your performance, um, 
host. Right now, there are no hosts, so there won't be anything. Um, you can have a cluster of uh, uh, vCenter servers. Uh, you can do that. Uh, you can add a host. So now our next step is to add a ESXi host. So what we'll do is we'll create another virtual machine on our VMware Workstation 10 uh, for the ESXi host, and then uh, we'll add that ESXi host to this vCenter server data center. Right, and uh, then we'll proceed our installation from there on. Okay.